Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Green Wisdom Health Show. I'm Janet Lewis. And I'm Dr. Lewis. And today we are going to educate you about your brain, your immune system, and the probiotics relationship to both. Because believe it or not, both of those things start in the gut. And for those of you that have been listening to our show for a long time, have probably come to realize that. And you've probably come to realize that Dr. Lewis likes to talk about probiotics and digestive enzymes and that kind of thing. But today we're going to tell you the differences between some of them and we're going to tell you some of the symptoms of uh, needing those and what happens without them. And as we're coming into this second round of a um, the COVID setback, There are people asking us what products and that kind of thing they should be taking again. So we thought we'd start with immune system because that's the big thing to get up during this time and all the time so that these things don't bother you as badly. So, Dr. Lewis, um, you know, a lot of people don't realize the difference between a probiotic um, and a digestive enzyme and a digestive enzyme and why they need a probiotic. And, you know, they they're already doing a multivitamin. They don't really understand what the difference is and frankly there's been a uh, you know there was a guy on tv talking about how they don't work so um can you dispel our myths and uh, help educate us a little bit and then we will also answer a lot of these questions that uh, you guys have been kind enough to write in on dr lewis's shooting straight facebook page or uh, part of his group and uh, we'll get some of those answered as well so we've got a big show so Tell us all about probiotics, why we need them, why, you know, they're, they're kind of a, something that stays in the, in the background, in the dark, so to speak. So uh, bring, it, bring some light to it. Yeah, I, I originally decided I was going to do probiotics because they did this thing on Good Morning America and somewhere else said probiotics, you know, didn't seem to work. And it's like... Folks, you got to follow the money, and there's nothing wrong with money, but some people choose to make it by telling lies, uh, lies and damn lies, uh, skew statistics. Uh, probiotics are very incredibly important, and I'm going to quote a little bit of uh, research to prove it. Uh, for those of you that want to take the bull by the horns, so to speak, sorry, it's a Texas thing, uh, read the book uh, about the gut being the second brain. Read the book called 10% Human. And there's there's many, many other ones. I loaned out a really good one. It's like dead gum, and I forget who I loaned it to. But it's called Skinny Gut Diet. I hope it comes back to me. Um, and, and all of these books will talk about massive amount of research about probiotics and how important they are. And I've talked to you about the Nobel prize in medicine being uh, won in 1908, and it was work about probiotics and how important it was. Not that we're generally practicing uh, the probiotics that well, but uh, the other thing is, I was reading the other day, and unfortunately, I don't have time to read as much as I used to, or fortunately, I guess, depending on how you look at it, but it, it was talking about fecal transplants. Like, oh, they're getting feces from a healthy person and, uh, you know, doing like a high colonic, uh, putting the feces of a healthy person into an unhealthy person. It's very obvious that when if you're overweight or if you're diabetic or you have metabolic syndrome, that you have an imbalance of the too many of the bad guys versus the good guys. There's actually plenty of research that says you have ten times as many microorganisms in your body than you have cells in your body. And you you have to make sure that it's the proper type and you're not feeding yeast. I'll talk about myself and Brian down in Florida. Uh, actually, once you change the and get the percentage or the ratios of the good guys in your guts better, things do change because i hear people all the time say but it don't taste good i said unless your taste buds got you in trouble in the first place uh i ate some ice cream last night and you know what really didn't taste good it's like dead gummit i guess bluebell's gonna go broke because i can't eat it 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 really wasn't that good but and this research i was reading was talking about when they did the fecal transplants that they noticed that weird things like parkinson's and MS went away. I always thought MS was just a death sentence. 
Now, we can't make any claims for nutritional supplements. You know that. But your body has the ability to heal itself. It needs the uh, raw materials to work with. And even the VA put a thing out that said uh, one of the best things you can do for COVID is quercetin, zinc, and vitamin D. Now, that's the VA saying that. And then there was another doctor. I read it in the newspaper said zinc was good for uh, immune system in fighting this uh, COVID stuff. Well, the thing about it is, is some people just get on and say, well, I'm taking zinc. Well, it may be the wrong form. And people say, but it says zinc. I said, well, just go pick the first woman you find walking down the street. That doesn't mean she's going to make a good wife when you get her home. There's differences in supplements. There's differences in people. So, you know, don't think it's all the same because it's definitely not and unfortunately not. Uh, So I want to link the gut and the brain by talking about, you know, some of uh, why our brains don't function well. And it is very directly related to the gut. There's also... Plenty of research that says hypomethylation or lack of B-complex is one of the reasons we have neurodegenerative problems, which can be headaches or stress and all the way up to the horrible neurodegenerative diseases. I just had a, I got a call yesterday. One of my dear, dear friends died of Alzheimer's, and it's like, well, I hate that. I love the guy, but it's not like I didn't give him the answer, and he died, in my opinion, way too young. Uh, of course, Smoking and drinking, you know, if you smoke a lot, uh, you probably can't take enough supplements to get ahead of that. So if you're smoking, quit. Uh, and it's always got something to do with inflammation. And, you know, there's plenty of research from places like New England Journal of Medicine and Neurology Reviews that talks about uh, neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's, Lou Gehrig's, Alzheimer's, multiple sclerosis, and other neurodegenerative problems that they are inflammatory diseases well one of the easiest quickest wisest smartest ways to fix that is fix your gut well you know and and so many people are hearing this fix your gut we did a little quiz here so that you could kind of have an idea of maybe whether or not you have an issue with your gut and maybe it's uh which is directly related to whether probiotics are missing in it um Do you experience occasional gas and are bloating within 30 minutes of eating? You know, do you always have that, sometimes or rarely? If you have the answer to always here, then it's not a good answer. So you know you need probiotics that Dr. Lewis is talking about. Or buy Janet lunch because she will give you digestive enzymes. I will give you all kind of things if you let me. And I known you had ice cream last night. I gave you a different kind of probiotic that helps kill that yeast craving. I sat there in front of you and ate it. I don't know. I guess I didn't notice. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel fatigued <laughs> shortly after eating? <clears throat> Is it always, sometimes, rarely? And I can tell you, Dr. Lewis and I both have experienced <laughs> most all these things at, at some point, And they're not like they used to be anymore because we do so many probiotics. Um, do you experience sleep disturbances or constant fatigue? So, and Janet and I didn't sleep good at all last night. So I think uh, me eating ice cream disturbed her sleep too. That must have been it. <laughs> do you struggle with any food intolerances? Do you have many? Because that's bad. Few or none. And, and seriously, folks, we've got some new tests that are coming up that you can get. We'll get into that probably a new podcast and you know, because it's going to be pretty involved. I mean, it's rocking these people's world, the ones that are doing it now. Oh, and do you experience sugar cravings? Always, sometimes, or rarely. It wasn't as good, honey, and I didn't eat as much because it didn't taste that good. <laughs> and the one we weren't, I wasn't really going to talk about today, but the sugar one, when you're going, well, what what's the one for that? It's called Saccharomyces boulardii. You, you might have heard of it before for antibiotic over antibiotic use, but we have it in a loose form. And people go, oh, my gosh, it's so expensive. But literally, it's so much stronger in a loose form. And if you do just the small scoop on it, it lasts you 10 months. So it's 
not expensive when you see what you're really getting. It's like nine billion per small scoop, or a small Saccharomyces capsules five billion. So um, if you do a little bit of that every night, your sugar cravings go away. Yeah, and, and we've seen people that come out of the hospital with a C diff infection. And, you know, if you don't know what that is, you haven't experienced it, and you just look up and say, thank you, Lord. Uh, and people say, well, I don't know what's wrong. I said, yeah, take a Saccharomyces boulardii and maybe one or two other things and, and see people within a month. Saccharomyces boulardii is something that just, uh, it's a yeast, but it'll go around and grab candida and bad bacteria and viruses. It doesn't colonize in the GI tract, but when you go excrete it, it takes the bad guys out with it. So it's like a bouncer. Okay, then how many servings of fresh fruits and vegetables do you consume daily? Zero to one serving, two to five, or six plus servings. If you're doing six plus servings, then you're scoring high that you're doing great. If Which means you might score. If it's zero to one servings, that's very bad because I hear people go, oh, it's a vegetable. I don't want to eat that. You need probiotics. Have you recently undergone a course of antibiotics in the past two months, in the past six months, or no? If you've undergone any kind of antibiotics in the past two to six months, you need those probiotics Dr. Lewis is talking about. And how long do they roughly say, Dr. Lewis, that it takes to reestablish good gut flora after a round of antibiotics? It, It depends on the research you read. All of you know that you can read all kinds of things, so don't just find something that says what you choose to believe. Read more and more. Uh, minimum two months. Generally, it's two years to reestablish the gut. And I've read plenty of research that says you never really totally reestablish it, but you should take the probiotics all the time, every day. I, I, now that Big John brought me the kombucha, I've decided, well, it's not that hard to brew that stuff. Uh, so you can brew your own, but I do that and I take other ones that we'll talk about. Do you experience seasonal immune challenges? And I think that's interesting that your sinuses, allergies, that kind of stuff, have got a lot to do with probiotics or lack of them. And that reflects whether or not your gut's healthy, because I used to bush hog down at the deer leash through goldenrod and goat weed and whatever. And I'd feel like my bronchi would just be nailed. You know, I couldn't work. I'd cough and hack and snort and snot, and you would have thought I had COVID, but COVID wasn't, we weren't aware of that back then. Now, since I've got my gut healthy, I can go bush hog down at the deer lease and, you know, blow my nose the next day. I'm good to go. I mean, because my gut's healthier, and, and we don't produce the same antigens or antibodies against that or the immunoglobulins. So, in reality, uh, when people are getting seasonal uh, things over the counter, they're basically just treating a symptom. They're not really getting to the root cause of why it's doing it in the first place, correct? Right. Uh, And, you know, I've certainly never been anti-medical, love the medical profession, but, you know, uh, sometimes some of the things that are done are like, oh, the oil light comes on your car, you just cover it up with duct tape or get under the hood and clip the wire. Uh, Fix the underlying problem. Okay. And if you're traveling, especially by plane, if you're doing it, well, you're probably not doing it as much anymore, but uh, if you're going five plus times per year, that is definitely an increased risk at needing needing, an, uh, needing a probiotic. Uh, zero to two times per year is less risk. And then I think this is interesting, and if you could explain why, because there's so many people having these surgeries now. Uh, have you ever had bariatric or gastric bypass surgery? If Why would you need an antibiotic if you've done that? You know, that's another uh, podcast I think I'm going to get into because there's different places in your stomach, small intestine, large intestine, certain places where certain specific nutrients are taken up or absorbed. And if you bypass, uh, then you're just uh, out of luck about certain uh, uptake of, say, calcium or magnesium or B12. It's it's very problematic, and I, I, I want to get into soon, uh, you know, like, for example, just magnesium. There's different types. 
that are absorbed differently in, in like 5% here and 10% there and 15% there, and it goes back down to 5% in the colon. And that's why our active mag is real good because it's different forms that are absorbed differently and in different places. So you end up getting a, a greater dose of magnesium, which you cannot get out of the soil. And so, um, you know, I wanted you to talk a little bit about the uh, product that we have called ProBioEase because there's um, now they're beginning to talk about prebiotics. You've heard of probiotics or maybe you haven't now you're learning about them. But prebiotics are a whole different animal. And uh, we happen to have a, a product called ProBioEase that is a, a sin a symbiotic kind of type thing is what they say because it works synergistically together okay. and um you know for people that i guess you know are traveling or or that kind of thing and they have a hard time refrigerating products you know i think dr lewis was uh, going to use this maybe in the gut testing that we have coming up because uh, ibs type symptoms the this particular one um, is great for people that have a problem with inulin, which is something that you see on on this new testing you're talking about, right? Yeah, you know, people get a little bit of information. They come in here and says, well, I want a probiotic. Does yours have inulin in it? It has to have inulin because I read about it. It's like, yes, most of them do, but there are times it's not appropriate at all. Those are the ones that take the probiotic and say, oh, my God, I got so bloated and gassy and uh, you know, there's times you don't need that stuff. Um, that's so, right. So this one doesn't contain inulin. So that's the thing that makes it. Uh, yeah, those that have really super duper gut problems, you know, the IBS, Crohn, celiac, uh, you know, things like that. It's like, eh, you better start with the probioese. It's, I've been told by the manufacturer it's actually the most uh, researched probiotic in the world, but we're not supposed to talk about what's going on with it. it it's stuff that passes different barriers and actually colonizes but it's for the systems that are really 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 sensitive i think is uh, probably a good way to put it but it works very synergistically okay so that's and that's one that's shelf stable as well so you don't have to worry about trying to you know keep it refrigerated and then as as far as a probiotic that what would you recommend for someone that you're trying to really help their brain and, you know, maybe you could explain a little bit about how how a probiotic would do that. But we have one specifically that people seem to really love because they actually say that in the in the future that people will quit being given an, uh, antidepressants and they'll be given probiotics instead. Correct. Yeah, they say that in the future. And it's like, well, it was 1908 when Matikin off. Well, that was somebody won the Nobel Prize in 1908. So I, I doubt we're going to get to, oh, my God, you just brew your own probiotics and take this. I doubt it'll happen for a couple hundred years. But we have one called uh, Target GBX that is somewhere close to Holy Jesus, a miracle. We've seen it on kids with ADD, ADHD, autism. And GBX stands for gut-brain axis. And what it does, you know, there are certain uh, probiotics that, well, they do a lot of different things. It, it talks about it shifts the cytokine production. We know the cytokine storm, too much of it's a bad thing, both in this COVID and in uh, cancer. Uh, it it modulates, it actually modulates the inflammation and helps the nervous system have more uh, elasticity, I think would be a good place to put it, and talks about the TNF, which tumor necrosis factor. Um, it, it helps the hypothalamus. Uh, it helps the hippocampus. The hippocampus is not a hip, uh, not a college for hippos, but they're, they're, that affects short-term memory too. But when you talk about the hypothalamus, that also release, releases stuff like corticotrophins, uh, releasing hormones, which tells the pituitary to do what it's supposed to do, which tells the adrenals to do what it's supposed to do. And then you have high or low cortisol, depending on how strong that is. Uh, and then you get the vagus nerve involved, which is vagus means wandering. It's the 10th cranial nerve, if I remember my anatomy and physiology correctly, uh, which affects mood, cognition, and your emotions. And there's been plenty of studies done on that, that uh, you can decrease your agitating thoughts, your anger, your stress, your over-worrying, your OCD, 
depression. Wait. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. Which I know this has been a big deal for people going through this COVID. That yeah. Target GBX has been a very popular product because in, in layman's terms, it, it just makes you, makes happy. you happy. Right. <laughs> so, so I mean, if you're getting up in the morning, you're going, oh, my God, not today. Uh, it you can. It's just a little powder. It's kiss why kids can take it it doesn't taste bad you just dump it in your mouth chase it with some water worked on our granddaughter in great ways we've talked about that before and it and just uh i mean just in about 30 minutes or less it's like okay i can do this day I, and i'm going to be happy about it because it really does alter the mind of how it is so brain function so um that's target gbx and then i want to make sure because i we're all right way into the show and uh we didn't get to many of these questions last time but i want to make sure we get to a few of these and maybe dr lewis can tell us a little bit more about the brain um but donna had a had a question about using msm powder for digestion leaky gut respiratory tract sinus allergies hey we just covered that didn't we probiotics probiotics i'm sorry go ahead mm-hmm. answer the question yeah i appreciate that donna uh, she's a real sweetheart got her from being on one of her brother's podcast um msm can be a very very good thing and it's because and same with glucosamine and chondroitin because it has a lot of sulfur molecules in it and sulfur is one of the pathways of detoxification of the liver and that's why it can help with uh, respiratory tract, sinus, uh, help with leaky gut and allergies because it helps the liver function uh, more readily. And then there's some people said, no, I've tried MSM or conjoiner or glucosamine and it does not work. It's like, well, try a different one. And, you know, some of them, are, again, they're really not all the same. And then people that have uh, shellfish allergies can't take that. So, again, that's where our testing, our new testing's coming up. And holy Jesus, blown me into a whole new reality of having to learn more, better, bigger. So instead of retiring, I think, oh, okay, I'm learning so much I can't afford to retire because I enjoy this too much. So MSM can be good, but if it doesn't work, uh, try more of it or try a different brand. And, you know, you know, you can call me. So thank you, Donna, for that question. Cricket has a question, which she's been a a client of ours for many years. She's taking an energy healing class online and hoping to heal some issues in her body. I've, I've taken your supplements for over five years now. Okay, over five years. Can a body heal is her question. Yeah. And I don't know exactly, Cricket, what kind of energy course you're taking. I think it's a really good thing. And you know, if you listen to my podcast for a long time, that uh, energy can just start with your thoughts and making yourself say and uh, speak better things, and that creates more better energy. You can vibrate better. I actually have a 528C tuning fork, and I listen to it because that's supposed to be the vibration of love. And when I do that, I I don't want to get into what happens, but... Uh, I get really, really, really uh, blessed in ways and places where statistically it's almost impossible. Uh, Cricket, I'll talk to you personally about that. And tell Brian, thank you for the map on glyphosate. Uh, He sent me a map. It's like, holy jeez, no wonder we're full of all kinds of problems because of what they're doing with glyphosate. So energy yes chiropractic that's why i do it acupuncture is wonderful learning to meditate and yoga and whatever your practice and i know you're definitely going to take it to a really good degree so yeah keep it up okay and penny uh commented that she's cut her migraines down to less than two per month by cutting gluten out of her diet and People look at us like we're nuts i mean we tell people stop your gluten and they're like well i don't really know what gluten is um, it, once you do that testing that we're talking about, which is now available on our website, um, you'll know what gluten is, and you'll know when you eat it if it bothers you after the, that. What once once you learn, um, because you know we've all kind of brandy here that's always had a gluten problem. Most all of us have a gluten problem to just what degree is we're not sure yet, but um, you know people just think oh that's no big deal it's just some kind of health nut thing. And um, it's not. It's a it's a very real problem, and it creates a whole lot of chaos in the gut. 
So um, congratulations, Penny, for cutting your migraines down to less than two per month because that is one of the things that gluten causes. Uh, I know Brandy said when she eats just a little bit of it, she's down on the floor just with excruciating head pain. So um, if you've not done this test, consider looking at it on greenwisdomhealth.com. Um, it's called the Vibrant Wheat uh, wheat zoomer. Wheat zoomer. That's what it is, and it comes right. with lectin zoomer, and it comes with a couple of other things. And Doctor Lewis is talking about glyphosate. Uh, you can add the food additives to it, which test glyphosate. It gets super involved. Yeah, like, it is. Uh, oh my God, it'll blow you into a new reality about what's wrong. And you know that's a good thing to remove gluten, but then you've got to repair gut leakiness. You've got to replace the digestive enzymes. You've got to replace the probiotics. Uh, so there are several stages to it. Removing it is a good thing. It's just not complete. Good. So congratulations, Penny, on that. Yes. She also wants to know about bug bites and stings. What can we put on them to soothe them? I've noticed that when I get stung or bitten that I react more strongly. Bigger that's welts. A, that's a gut problem. Autoimmune being uh, overly reactive. Interesting. That's why I quit the bee. I gave my last B stuff away to my brother today because the more they sting me, the worse I get. What can you put on it? I think tea tree oil. I found a chigger bite today. It's like, holy crap. You know, where's the tea tree oil? Lavender well, oil. Lavender works for most people very, very well, but that's one that makes me swell up. So if you if it mm-hmm. creates an inflammation or an inflammatory response, then, uh, you know, experiment with it. It says, what can I do? She says, what can I do to help my immune system calm down when these things happen? Is there a natural equivalent to Benadryl or something that she could take when it happens? I'm yeah. trying to think what I give you. I give you bromelain quercetin a lot of times yeah. because it takes uh, the inflammation out. Uh, we've had them at different times. Uh, do you still have the Hiss DAO? Uh, there's another one somewhere. I, you know, we've changed names a lot in this last year so. Pardon me. If I don't know it, I just ask Brandy because she's got more room in her brain. Yeah, the the um, histoplex. Oh, uh, that's it. That's yeah. it. The, the, but we, I take a lot of the quercetin bromelain though. It it helps a lot. And there's research that talks about quercetin helps uh, seal leaky gut. The SBI is an incredible product. So, and, and I put a load, a bunch on the uh, probiotics in every day. Very good. Okay. And we only have a few minutes left, and I know you wanted to talk a little bit more about what you were um, wanting to educate us all about with the probiotics in the brain. So uh, I don't know that we got into everything you were wanting to discuss there with that. So what else would you like to tell people? Well, you know, uh, I've said a lot, but it it helps to uh, increase the integrity of the intestinal lining. And if your intestines aren't healthy, you're not going to be happy. Uh, it, good probiotics helps replication of the good cells so they don't replicate in a bad way. So actually the health of your intestinal flora actually determines how your genes work or what your genetic tendencies are. So poor GI flora leads to poor DNA replication or potentially cancer. And and these are well researched things that uh, you know we're talking about. Uh, toxic intestinal bacteria can produce interleukins, which is another form of inflammatory chemicals. That's from Journal of Immunology and Journal of Free Radical Biology Medicine. Uh, less healthy gut bacteria may cause the wrong sugar products to stick to the cell membranes, and we've got a massive amount of. Uh, Metabolic syndrome, diabetes, and obesity. And the obesity, the more obese you are, the more chance you've got of having brain uh, problems. Uh, Gut bacteria can induce or repress the P450 pathway of liver detoxification. And so you have to have it correct. One of the best things you can do besides take this stuff is eat a lot of cabbage, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, uh, broccoli, turnips, uh, because they help detoxify the liver, because end all three carbonyl turn into DIM. You've heard Janet talk about DIM a lot. Uh, one of the, if you're overweight, and they say thirty percent of us, and I call bull crap on that. It's more like seventy percent of us, at least here in the South. And Texas is not the most obese state. That's Mississippi, but I think Texas is uh, 
close behind, we do a lot of the ProBio lean, and that has certain uh, species of bifidobacterium and lactobacillus, certain ones that can play a role in uh, the it, it balances energy extraction actually from the diet creates things like the uh, short chain fatty acids cla conjugated linolenic acid if i'm remembering right sorry this is coming off the top of my head i don't have any notes but uh it, it's really good i thought well is this stuff gonna work i was like yeah 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 so I tried it, and I lost seven, eight pounds, boom, in two weeks. Didn't change my diet at all. It's like, okay, uh, it, it works. So, yeah, we can sell it because if it didn't work, I wouldn't have sold it. But, yeah, it, it actually, works real well. I think it actually helps support glucose metabolism so that people yeah. aren't as hungry and you're not craving the bad stuff so bad. So that's another one you can consider if you're trying to lose weight, right? Yep, yep. Okay, it's probioline. And, unfortunately, we have come to the end of our show Please share our podcast with others. It would be a blessing to us and a blessing to others to help someone else learn how to take care of their health. Uh, because I know many of you are doing it on your own out there and doing a good job, and we're trying to help you along so you can uh, take the road that's not so rocky and get the right things. And if you're new to our show, go to our website, greenwisdomhealth.com. Fill out our health survey. Get started feeling better today and quit guessing at what's going on with your health. And Dr. Liss, would you like to leave us with some closing words? Well, yeah, before I do, I'd like to thank Wade for sending in some people uh, from Mount Vernon, Illinois. I just had a nice conversation with uh, the husband there, Wade, so thank you very much. Uh, You know, the main thing, I think everything, all battles are mental slash spiritual so I really think the worst battle that we ever have to fight is what you know versus what you feel. And you've got to get past that. You know, it's success is really uh, the sum of small efforts that you repeat day in and day out. And so truth is always, I mean, you always know the right thing to do. The hard part's really doing it. So, you know, bring out that courage. You know, read inspirational things every day. Listen to inspirational people. And, you know, get that rah-rah session. You know, call me. I'll be your cheerleader. And you can have a life worth living and feel healthy and inspire others to do something better. That's where the feel-good comes. It's not when you help yourself, but when you find out how much it's helped others. So thank you for your referrals. We've been getting a lot of them lately. So we're being blessed. So thank you. We'll bless you back. We hope you guys stay blessed and have a great week. Once again, our show has come to an end, but your hope and your health is only beginning. If you or a loved one are in need of a different outcome and are waiting for a brighter future, take the first step and go to our website and fill out the health survey. Please don't keep us a secret. If you know someone that could benefit from this podcast, please share this show with your friends and family. You're only one step away from a life worth living.